What's up everybody? Well today I'm here to show you another vacuum that just joined my vacuum collection. And this is actually one of the forgotten vacuums that I've neglected to make a video on until now. What I have for you today is a vacuum that has a very interesting piece of history. Here I have for you a Hoover Dialomatic with automatic power drive, model U6039. There were a couple variants of the Dialomatic with power drive. There was the U6003, that was the red model without the headlight or bag check indicator. Then there was this, and then there was also a brown U6041 which is pretty much the same vacuum, just a different color. And this is definitely one of the higher end models since it has the, the power drive feature, which is obviously the self-propelled. And this vacuum I bought off eBay after always wanting one after having a couple of concept machines because the Dialomatic was basically the predecessor to the concept. And not just that, but this vacuum, believe it or not, was the first vacuum to feature clean air technology. Although the clean air technology is not the way we know it as of today, going through several of HEPA filters and whatnot. This vacuum basically does exhaust out a, a series of filters, but however, it's just one singular filter towards the top, which the filtration is still not the best by today's standards, but this vacuum was just very revolutionary when it debuted in the mid 60s. And this example is actually one of the last of the Dialomatic series, since it has the, the U nomenclature beforehand when they just had four digits instead of U, then four digits, like they do now. So this is definitely one of the newer examples of the Dialomatics before the concept series came out, but... This is a very awesome machine to have. It's definitely built like a tank. So anyway, let's go ahead and give a walkthrough of the cleaner. Right here is your upper handle that basically slides up and down as part of the self-propelled feature. You also do have this little button right here that basically locks the handle but however, it is spring-loaded, so it'll fall back. This is just a good idea to locate your handle so the transmission is in neutral, so that way when you turn it on, it's not propelling forward or backwards on you. Which, this feature was eventually carried over to the early model concepts before later being replaced by the lockout switch, which I honestly prefer a little bit better, but... So you kind of have to get used to the and find the handle that's in neutral with this little locator. And your power switch is on the back. I really do like the, the power switch design on these older Hoovers. It reminds me of the switch, a light switch in a house. And right here is your power cord on the back. You, you can release it right here and that also acts as a lock for your bag compartment. So as we open up here, here is the bag I'm running in this. It is a rigged Kenmore style O bag. It does fit the, the hole right here. Doesn't fit the greatest, but it works good for what it is. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to find some better way to hold this on. But as you, you will notice, the bag is mounted upside down. 
which is pretty interesting in its design. And you also will notice along the back here, you do have a selector dial, which I believe is what ultimately earns this vacuum the name Dialomatic. But correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, it's a suction control. So if it's switched to the left, a diverter will divert all the suction going to the head of the vacuum. Then when you switch it, it controls a little valve inside here. And when you switch it all the way to the right, it allows for tool suction. So you can hook up an aftermarket uh, or an optional hose on the back and you can get tool suction. And obviously it can be controlled with this dial. Very oddball design. Right here is what I am supposed to believe is its example of a pre-motor filter. It's still in surprisingly good condition. So with that said, let's go ahead and set the bag back on somewhat loosely for right now. Lock that back into place. And go ahead and temporarily put the cord up for right now. Of course, I will be releasing it again later for the running portion of the video. But just so it's not in the way, I'm gonna wrap it up for now. So as we come around here to the front of the cleaner, you have this beautiful blue color scheme of the U6039. You have your Hoover lettering on the front. Your exhaust vent is on the top here. As these things age, the, the grill up here for the exhaust vent is known to crack and break. So it's a good thing that this is in nice condition. You also will notice, if you look very close, there is a, a piece of filter material in there that catches all the dust that exhausts out. It's not the best by today's standards, but if you want, you can always open this up and replace it with fil with, with fil with, excuse me, with vent filter material that hopefully is in, is thicker than this. You have this beautiful retro Hoover insignia right here. Really love that. Down here is your electronic bag check indicator that will light up when the bag gets full. And you do have a headlight lens back down here, being one of the higher end models. And you will notice on these power drive dialomatics, they do not come with carpet height adjustment. The head will actually pivot depending on what pile of carpet you have it on, which the lower end models without the power drive, some will have the feature for a carpet height adjustment. So let's go ahead and flip this thing on its back to show you the underside. So here right here is the brush roll. It's a, basically a two strip brush roll with red bristles that are very medium stiff and the bristles are very nice and sparse and they are also very long. Just look at how far they stick out below the base plate. Let me show you the other side. See, look how long these, thi these bristles are. And you also do have a set of beater bars on both sides. And one more thing, these brush strips are replaceable. They are the same style of brush strips that you can get on a Hoover convertible. And yeah, these two latches right here will release the bottom plate. Down here is your self-propelled transmission. And I do love that it's all metal. 
move the rear axle down here. And if I'm not mistaken, right over here is where the model number is. I don't know if you could read that. That's on 120 volts, 60 hertz. This vacuum has, if I'm reading right, a seven amp motor. So Hoover model U6039. It beats as it sweeps, as it cleans. Hoover symbol right down there. This reminds me of another YouTube channel that I watch. As that little phrase, it beats as it sweeps as it cleans, may sound very familiar to you guys in the UK who watch another collector's channel. You probably will know who I'm speaking of. But as far as I know, I've pretty much shown you all around this beautiful retro cleaner so for now let's go ahead and release the power cord you see if you rotate this it will catch this part of the cord and you can release it off but yeah you got to be careful sometimes it'll take the rear bag door with it the cord is in very good condition so let's go ahead and plug this guy in. And now comes the part you guys have been waiting to see. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and give you a demo of it running. Now, typical old school vacuum fashion, I'm pretty much used to old Hoovers, is that they are pretty loud when they're running. These dialomatics are pretty noisy too, even being a clean air vacuum and all. So headphone users, I advise turning down your volume for this part. So away we go. And it runs very nice and smooth. So let's keep going. Transmission does chirp a little bit when you first use it, but it'll eventually clear up. Might need to be re-greased.
pretty smooth running machine. Other than that transmission chirp and borderline squeal that you hear when you first start to use the cleaner, it eventually clears up. If anyone can tell me how to fix it, please let me know. Because that's the only annoying thing about using this. But, yeah, the transmission, I would like to point out, is very snappy. Propels a bit too fast for my taste. But, anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and show you the optional hose that you can get on these things new. They just hook towards the back and twist to lock. You also do have your attachments that mount on, like such. And let's go ahead and switch the machine on and switch it to tool mode. The suction on this is actually pretty respectable. A little bit better than, than its direct air successors from later on. You can have those little suction release here. Very good. Your crevice tool. You have your little mount right here. Your crevice tool and your dusting brush. the lock. One thing I do like about these twist and lock features on these tools, they are actually set up in such a way that you can actually mount or actually use tools from late model Hoover canisters because they have this little notch up at the top that will line up just perfectly with this hose design. See, you just mount it in, and it goes right in, twist the lock as it should, and the tool stays in place. See, that's the upholstery tool. I like it how the canisters have these rubber teeth along the back, unlike the one seen on the uprights of the time. And here's your dusting brush. roll may need some bearing work and then again maybe the self-propelled could use some bearing work too some people may know these hoover self-propelled use the same style of bearings used in the brush rolls so hopefully that would fix maybe the squeak squeaking noise that it tends to make but 
Who knows? Anyone in the comment section let me know what I should do with the transmission or if I should just try to source a replacement. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Hoover Dialomatic with Power Drive. Be sure and stay tuned and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.